Hey, welcome back. Um, we are, of course, going to do a few more definitions today. We're going to start with a few informal definitions. So I'm going to just write these so that you know you don't have to memorize them. But there are two words here that we need to understand what these words mean if we're going to understand how we use them in mathematics. All right, so commute. Uh, kind of has two related but different definitions that we deal with most of the time. Uh, and that means to change or to travel back and forth. And you can see how those are related, right? When you commute from home to work, Uh, maybe you work in an office building, probably you don't, not that many people do these days. But historically, right, you're going from your house to your work, and then in the evening, you go from your work back to your home. Right? That's your morning commute. You're changing which is your starting point and which is your ending point. That's what it means to commute. Right? To associate uh, informally here, associate means who you hang out with. And it implies a negation as well, right? If we've got a, a bunch of friends here, maybe these guys are associating with each other, but not with this person, right? They don't like him, he's the bully, they're not gonna associate with him. Or these guys are in one long firm, one law firm, right? They're law, legal associates, and these two guys are a different law firm, like guys, girls, whatever. Uh, these folks are associating with each other, but not with these guys. These guys are associating with each other, but not with these guys. Okay? I think we recognize those two words in our everyday language. Once we get to mathematics, people suddenly forget what those words mean. In math, we say that addition is commutative. And now we're using commute in its adjective form. Commute is, uh, can be a verb or a noun, like your morning commute, or your, that's a noun, or the verb, I commute to work this morning. Uh, commuted this morning um, using it as a verb, right? But commutative, there's an adjective, right? What do we mean when we say addition is commutative? Well, we can be fancy about it and say addition has the property of being commutative. Right? We talk about commutative as something uh, an adjective that applies to addition, right? We could say, um, I have the property of being a human. My pet cat does not share that property. So she does not walk on two feet. She walks on four feet, right? There are all sorts of properties that humans have that cats don't, all sorts of properties that cats have that humans don't. Uh, we're both mammals. And so there are some properties that we both have, right? We're both warm blooded with a, a four chamber heart, right? So what is this property within mathematics? The property of being commutative is very much based on what we mean when we say we go to work and come home from work, right? If I have the sum of two things, say five plus three, going from work, and then uh, the other way, that's the same as if I had three plus five. Uh, I'm writing five B plus A, it's the ugliest B ever. There we go. So A plus B is equal to B plus A. There's our general form. One particular instance of that, five plus three is equal to three plus five. 
And we can see, of course, why that must be true uh, when we focus on the definition. They were continuing to count or continuing to move. If I take this arrow and move it, oops, uh, both stuck. So I'll just go back to this more informally. If I take this arrow and instead of being at the end, I move it to the beginning. And then I take this arrow of five. And instead of that being at the beginning, that all of a sudden is at the end. Lo and behold, I've reached the same spot. Right? When we say addition is commutative, or we say the uh, addition has the property of being commutative. We're saying the order we write those terms in does not affect the outcome. So uh, a formal way of saying that the way that we're used to saying it, defining the commutative property of addition, property of addition. We're saying that for addition, not every Operation has this property. Right? Addition is one of a handful that do. For addition, the order of the input values does not affect the output value. If I say five plus three or three plus five, it's not going to matter. That's the commutative property. That is very different from being associative, right? Addition is a binary operation. It can only deal with two inputs at a time. Five plus three is eight. Three plus five, also eight. I should probably write those eights here. Eight is equal to eight. Both of these wind up at eight. Whether we go five and then three, or three and then five, I'm landing, I'm starting at zero. I'm going to land at eight either way. Right. To be associative, we have to associate with something and disassociate from something else. Right. So I need at least three things. So I can say, well, is B going to associate with A or is B going to associate with C? So let's stick with our five plus three. Um, and let's go with six. Well, if I associate the three with the five, I can put a grouping symbol around that plus sign and say, I'm going to add the five plus three first, associate these two inputs, perform this plus first, change colors here. He's going first. That's what these grouping symbols tell me. So I get five plus three, that's eight. And eight plus six is 14, right? And because I'm using whole numbers, I can just count eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Or I can start with five plus three plus six. And say, no, I actually want three to associate with the six where I'm performing the second plus symbol first. I'm not doing five plus three, I'm doing six plus three. Now, because we already know additions commutative, I don't have to start with three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can start with the six, seven, eight, nine. Right? Within that one addition, I can use the commutative property to really do six plus three instead of three plus six, just because that's faster. However you do it, the sum of three and six is nine. So I've performed this plus first. And then I can add that to the five. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's a lot of counting. It's a lot faster to say nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right? Whether I do five plus nine or nine plus five, that's the commutative property. But once I'm doing five plus nine, that does not look the same as eight plus six. I have two completely different numbers here. 
And that's because I put these through my process in a different order. But the associative property of addition is telling me that that doesn't matter, right? To be associative means that if I have the same operation a bunch of times, it doesn't matter which instance of that operation I perform first. So I've kind of run out of space here. I'll go to a new page to write that down. So the associative property of addition. And apparently I can't spell property to save my life. Associative property of addition says that, uh, make, make sure I say this the same way every time, uh, for the operation of addition, uh, the order in which multiple instances of addition are performed does not affect the final output value. Okay, it's mouthful, right? For the operation of addition, that's what it means to be of addition. The order in which mul multiple instances of addition are performed, not dies, does, does not affect the final output value, right? And that's what we just illustrated through this one example. Now, there's nothing special about five and three and six, right? Uh, we can think of uh, our colored marbles here, right? If I've got five of these guys, three of these guys, and six of these guys. Well, I can't simultaneously add those three numbers, right? I can only add two things at a time. It's a binary operation. But clearly this is one pile of marbles. It doesn't really matter which one I, I start with. If I start with the five, uh, I could add three to that, five plus three. There's my eight. And then from eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Or if I start with the six, six, seven, eight, nine, there's my nine. And then I can add my five, one, two, three, four, five, and still get 14. Right? I've written five, three, and six, five, three, and six going left to right, but I don't have to go left to right. That's one of the big uh, jumps from performing operations in purely arithmetic settings. Uh, where you can always get the value, to then being ready for algebra is you don't have to go left to right. When we get just five plus three plus six, you can add these in any order you want. Because addition is both commutative and associative, you could do five plus six first and you get 11. I hope you know five plus six is 11 and then add three to get 14, right? Now, formally to show that you're allowed to do that, you kind of go through several steps. But if we remember that addition is associative and commutative, we mean that so long as we have multiple instances of addition, once we throw in other operations, uh, we have to be careful. But as long as it's all addition, we can combine those terms whatever order we want. So that leads us to one really big idea that is going to be so helpful for the rest of this semester and for the rest of your life whenever you're adding things, right? So he, here it is to add, subtract, or compare values. Uh, let's be more general, to, or compare terms. They must have the same units. If I'm trying to figure out uh, 
some combined distance and I have six feet and two inches and also three feet and seven inches. I'm not just adding six plus two plus three plus seven. I need to look at the units. It's gonna be the same thing with fractions. It's gonna be the same thing with variables. To add, subtract, or compare terms, they need to have the same units. I can add my six feet to three feet. That gives me nine feet. And then I can add my two inches to seven inches. That also gives me nine. But nine inches is not the same as nine feet. This is an 18 of anything, right? These are two different units. I might be able to convert. Uh, we'll talk about converting feet and inches in a later video. But whatever those units are, if they're not the same, I can't perform that operation. I can't add if they don't have the same units. Okay. Now, one more really quick definition. And that is the most interesting or least interesting, uh, depending on your perspective. The most interesting or least interesting value for addition. And that is the additive identity. An identity is a noun, right? And in mathematics, the identity is the value. The identity is a value that has no effect. Uh, it's not effective, right? If you add the identity to something, it doesn't change it, right? So in general, if we're starting with some value, let's say X, if I add three to X, I get some new value. Right? If I'm looking at my number line, here's x on my number line. Well, x plus 3 has moved over. x plus 3 is over here. I get a new value that has some impact. Right? That has an effect. But there is a number, a value, that if I add it to x, I don't go anywhere. I just stay right at x, right? And you probably already know what that is. Um, we call that zero, right? Zero is the additive identity. So let me say that on new line. Zero is the additive identity. That's a title that zero gets. It's a um, something it gets to put up on its mantle place, it has the property of being the additive identity, right? Uh, and that's really useful, that's really important. We're gonna use that a lot as we're solving equations, um, but we'll get into that in other videos as we solve equations in those videos. So that's all we have for today.